Hey guys, in this video I'll show you how to make the suspension script for your cars. It works by using four raycasts that shoot down at each of the points and then loops through each of the wheels and adds a force going down. So I've created this new Unity project here and I just have a script called car. And if you open it up in Visual Studio, we'll begin the coding. So we'll need a few variables. The first one is a public game object called wheel prefab. And this is just gonna be our wheel. I'll show you how to make it in a second. And then we'll also have a list of game objects, and this is where we'll store the wheel prefabs so we can set their position and rotation later on. And it's just going to be an array of game objects that are for a length of four. We'll also need a vector three, an array of vector threes called wheels, and this is going to be a vector three array of length four. We'll need a vector two called wheel distance. This is just going to be a variable that you can set yourself and it's going to be how, how far do you want the wheels. So in my case here, I have them two ahead and two apart, which makes a square, but you can have it whatever distance you want. And you can also make this variable public so you can edit it from Unity directly. And I'll just set it by default to 2-2. Two, two. We'll also need an array of floats called old distance or old di dis and this is going to be our previous distance that uh, our wheel was from the car and we use this to add dampening to the wheels so that it doesn't bounce around constantly. We'll also have a couple floats, I'll just paste them in. So we'll have a max suspension distance or max suspension length and I'll set it to 3. We'll have a suspension multiplier, set it to 120. We'll have a damp sensitivity and a, and a max damp. So uh, th this is pretty much just increase this if you want more dampening and decrease it. Keep this at 40. That just seems to work well. So we'll also have a rigid body because I need to access the rigid body. We'll have a vector three array. Actually, we don't need this, never mind. Yeah, so in the start method, I'll begin by just setting the rigid body to get component of type rigid body. And we'll also need an awake method. And in the awake method, I'll just have a for loop that loops through four times. I is less than four, I plus plus. And each time it loops through, I want it to set the old distance of i equal to max suspension length. So it just sets it to that by default so that we don't have any weird glitching at the start when we spawn in. We also want to set the wheel fabs at i equal to instantiate. We want to instantiate a wheel prefab at each wheel spot. So like wheels i with quaternion dot identity. This just has its default rotation. All right, so now we'll get into the main chunk of the code into the update method. Um, I'll start off by setting each of the wheels distances so the way i do this there's probably some better way um but i just write for each wheel is equal to transform dot right times wheel distance dot x plus transform dot forwards times wheel distance dot y so this is the front left wheel because both of them are positive so it moves forwards into the no this is the front right sorry so it moves forwards into the right and you can copy and paste this four times. We'll have the front left, and then back right and back left. And you can just set this to, um, set these two to negative, and then set these la last two to negative. All right, so we have all the positions of the wheels. We'll make another for loop that's literally the exact same thing as this. Copy it here. And inside of this for loop, uh, we need a raycast a raycast hit and just call it hit and then we'll we'll set a physics dot raycast physics dot raycast from the transform dot position plus wheels at i and we want it to be pointing at negative transform dot up send the, the send the information to the out variable the hit variable i mean and the max distance is going to be max suspension length all right so now write if hit dot collider is not equal to null then we'll do this, and then also write else, we'll do this. So if it's hitting the ground, we'll add a force at position, and the force is going to be mathf.clamp. We want to clamp the this variable, max suspension length, minus hit.distance, and we want to clamp it at between 0 and 3. So we don't want it to be negative if, you're, uh, if something is going wrong here, because we don't want to add any force going down. We'll multiply this by the suspension multiplier, and we'll multiply that by transform dot up. And we need to add another variable here. Add another transform dot up times mathf dot clamp. And this is going to be 
old distance at i minus hit distance, hit dot distance, times damp sensitivity, and we want to limit this between zero and max damp. So the most damping we could do is at the max damp amount. All right, so now we also want to multiply all of this by time dot delta time to make it frame rate independent. And we want to add wheels at i, or we don't want to add wheels dot, we want to set the position to transform dot position plus wheels at i. All right, so once you've got that down, it's kind of a long line. I'll uh, put an enter here so you can see everything. So this is the whole line. This is the main meat of the code that adds the force going down. And in the next line, we'll just add, we'll just set the, dis the distance of the wheels, like the position of the wheels. So wheel prefabs at i dot transform dot position is going to be equal to the hit dot point plus trans transform dot up times 0 0.5 f. So this just sets the position to the hit point, but also adds an offset that's slightly up because we want the wheels out of the ground. And you can copy this and remove this ending part and instead set the rotation equal to transform dot rotation. So it just, the wheels just follow our rotation. And that's pretty much it for this part. If you're not on the ground, then uh, we'll just copy this. The transform dot position of the wheel prefabs is going to be transform dot position plus wheels at i, the i to wheel, minus transform dot up times, times max suspension length minus 0.5f. So this just sets it, sets it to the max length that it can extend. And the rotation again is just going to be quaternion dot rotation or our, our current rotation. So after all of that, we're going to set the old distance equal to hit dot distance. And yeah, that should be everything that we need right now. So save that, head back into Unity. And now when we're in Unity, we want to create a new 3D object cube. We'll just have this as the floor. That's not how you score, but it's all right. And we'll set this to something like 100 by 100, just for testing purposes. And I also want to make a new material that's just gray, so we can see it a bit better. All right, and now we'll also create a new 3D object called cube, and we'll, this will be our car. Add a rigid body. Oh and add our car script. So then for the wheel fab, we want to create an empty object and just call it wheel. Make sure that you reset the transform, right click and press reset. Also create a new 3D object of a cylinder on it. Make sure the transform is reset. Set the Y to 0.1 and rotate it on the X by 90. And now drag the wheel object into your project folder and this should create a prefab. Delete it from your hierarchy, select your car and drag the new wheel prefab into the wheel prefab slot. And now also move the car up a bit. Set the scale to something like three by three so we can see it a bit better and press play. All right, so the issue here is that on our wheel prefab in the cylinder, you need to make sure to remove the capsule collider or else that happens. <laughs> So make sure there's no capsule collider. And now once you press play, okay, come back into the code. I forgot to just do something real quick. So on these set it to zero, one, two, and three so that it sets each of the wheels to uh, the right amount because yeah, I, I just forgot to add that in. Now head back into Unity and when we press play, it finally should be working. Make sure to save it and then head into Unity. I just forgot to save it. And all right, now the car is working. So in the next video, I'll show you how to make it actually drive and the wheels rotate with real physics to get it to properly drive, uh, as well as turning and other car stuff. And in later videos, if you want, I can show you how to add gears and make it like a full driving simulator like I've made before. So thank you for watching. Consider subscribing for weekly game dev videos and other tech videos and having a great time. So yeah, have a great day. See you in the next video.